finally got me. <laughs> Hi Jess. You alright, Thatch? Is that impressive? You did sign me down and overcome you really impressively. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in this case. How did you know we were going to come in at that moment? Have oh, you been waiting there for hours? Yeah. Mark, you've been waiting there. Ah, bullshit. See? Uh, I came up the other way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were being clever. <laughs> I was born with the wrong side, in the wrong house, with the wrong insanity. I took the wrong road, the led to the wrong tendencies. I was in the wrong place, at the wrong time, for the wrong reason and the wrong rhyme. On the wrong day, at the wrong week, used the wrong method with the wrong technique. Wrong. So many keyboards, but so right. few poly ones. That's your fault, isn't it, Martin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the exciting things about this album is you probably haven't heard, but Martin's got a new obsession, which is buying analog uh, synthesizers and drum machines on eBay. So he's been buying, he must have bought since the start of the album about 130 of these things. That's, in some ways, helped to shape the sound of the album, I think. I'm so addicted to it that stuff was turning up daily. It felt like uh, it was part of the master plan. Oh, this has turned up today, we better use it. So is, that, <laughs> is, that, is a lot of that stuff here still, or is it back in LA? No, the majority, majority of it's still here. The thing that we've used a lot, which is quite rare, is this thing. It's called a Steiner Parker Synthicon. And when was that made? When was the Steiner Parker made? 70s. I reckon. No, it's probably earlier than that. Earlier? Well, yeah, late 60s, 70s. Yeah, early 70s. Yeah. That's an eBay purchase, is it? Yeah. Um, and it, amazingly, it worked. <laughs> yeah, we've used it a lot. A lot of the keyboard tracks that you see were all, all stuffed away in these cases. Yeah. Just, we're just going to get them out as we need to use them. Yeah, I've got so many now that I don't really need any more keyboards. <laughs> I suppose you'll stop ordering once the recording's finished and you're going on tour anyway. So yeah. It's just curb your addiction or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be some cut off point. This time, I think it was quite obvious there was going to be another album coming because um, it had been so successful and the mood had been really great. But that has also been the case throughout our career. We never talk, you know, this is going to be our last album, this is going to be our last tour. You know, it's not like we let's have a talk and plan our, our future.
I decided to get back to writing quite quickly, which is unusual for me. I usually take quite a big break after a tour before I start writing again. I mean, I suppose I, I had a fair break. The tour finished in, what was it, beginning of August or so. And I think I started writing again in, you know, like January. I mean, Martin was just doing fantastic, you know, he was just writing a song every two weeks sort of thing. So I went over twice to Santa Barbara to listen to the songs, you know, I mean, he was writing more prolifically than he's ever done in his life. For some reason, I don't know if it was the way I worked or, you know, just, you know, my um, headspace or whatever, I, you know, I found it a lot easier this time to, to write than I usually do. See, I think one thing I think that did take pressure off me was the fact that I knew that Dave was doing Hourglass, so I knew that there wasn't any big time frame that I had to keep to. You know, I knew we wouldn't be back in the studio for a good, you know, probably year to a year and a half after I started writing. I think he'd done about 20 songs altogether, and then Dave had done four, and then from those we decided which ones would, uh, we would record. And then we were in the process of deciding which ones are going to go to, onto the record. You can have the inspiration to write a song, and you can have lots of good ideas about how you're going to write a song, but then to turn that into an actual song, which is any good, it is not easy and it takes an awful lot of writing basically you've just got to write and write and write and write and you've got to throw at least 80 percent of them away and dave has been doing that and he's written a lot he was different this time he presented us with an awful lot of tracks for playing the angel and, and let us choose and this time he did the choosing and before he presented them to us so he presented us with a few tracks and we've done nearly all of them i think uh, how long have you had this um i've been here I would say like five years or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Follow me in and I shall show you. When Andrew and Christian come over, we use this room as like a control room. And we've got a little, in this space in here, we've got um, a dead room, which is great sort of for... Uh, vocals. Well, actually, I don't sing in here. We did. We uh, we have. I've done a bit of singing in here, but I find I didn't really like it. I don't like doing that thing with headphones and all that kind of stuff. You can do that, but we we do drums in here. Can stick an amp in here and sort of crank it up, and no one you know complains in the building because the the room's floating. I I work in here a lot, um, and this is my sort of like little office room. Christian will sort of set up his little his gear with the you know with the piano or keyboard, and we set up a mic here. We're kind of put together ideas in here. And then when we've got something going on that we think is going somewhere, we pass it on to Andrew. I was going to say, because like, Christian, obviously, everybody probably knows him more as a drummer. Yeah. But, I mean, is he actually quite...? No, he's very musical. I mean, obviously, rhythmically, but um, he, he actually plays piano really well. Yeah, he's very musical and sort of very sympathetic to the, the naivety of my sort of writing style. Depeche Mode have had two world-class songwriters, you know, Vince Clark and Martin Gore. So, you know, you're sort of fearing that between Dave's songs and Martin's songs there's going to be this big gap. But so that hasn't, hasn't actually turned out at all like that. It does work with Dave's songs. You know, it, it, I don't think that, you know, if we did a blind trial, people would be able to pick them out easily. You know, I think they do fit in because, you know, we all work on them in the studio and the songs come out with a certain sound anyway, and I think they just sound part of the picture. Martin, like, from the moment we started working on, on something that I'd, I'd put forward, he was really involved and wanted to make it better. It wasn't like, oh, you know, let's get this out of the way. It was kind of, it was really Mark showing up and being part of that process. It's given Dave much more confidence in the studio. He's much more knowledgeable because he's done his own solo albums, and uh, I think he feels part of the band a lot more now. I'm just learning here, you know, and it's great. It feels really exciting because it is something that I, I feel like I've got a long way to go with. Come back and come back to me. I'll be waiting patiently. Come back to me I'll be waiting here Patiently Walking a thin white line 
Day's work in life to face is roll in around 11 o'clock in the morning, play table football, have a cup of coffee, have a chat about what they're going to do with the day, go and have lunch, come back from lunch, have a game of table football, twiddle around with a few sounds, have a meeting about where they're going to go for dinner, have dinner, come back, too full, have a game of table football, we'll go back to the hotel and Ben and the others just carry on working. Okay, bye. <laughs> Best best scores uh, for uh, table football. Doesn't matter, the Jacks. Birds of Paradise, Bop. Uh, the Almighty, which is Mark and um, Luke. And Birds of Paradise are Ben and I. And then we have the uh, Wife Runs. <laughs> Otherwise, aka Yausa. Uh, the skid marks. We haven't had a chance to play much, have we, on this session? No, it's not working very well. The, the table's it's in a... It's a well, it's work keeps getting in the way, which is pain in the ass. Yeah. yeah. Traditionally, we've got to finish this thing. The teams are... The yeah, Wildfronts and the Birds of Paradise. Boys of Paradise. Boys of Paradise. Yeah. Benjamin, while you look at it, losers and champions. There's a touch. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> to deep ideas with the songs, like the one they're working on right now, as you can see, Make Better. <laughs> yeah. And I, oh, yeah, that may or may not happen, you see. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 My favourite title there is Dust. Toast Up. Yeah, which is something that happens when you're playing table football. It's sometimes you, and the, the player will get the ball caught between his feet and the table, and it's known as the Toast stub. Like, <laughs> when it doesn't go anywhere. It would be very painful. Um, yeah, that's actually uh, a little collaboration between Martin and myself. Could you imagine actually working with him as a songwriter, or do you feel that's kind of not really the way you, you prefer to work? It's funny you should say that, but there is actually one track um, that probably won't make the album, but maybe an, an extra track on the first single and probably be on like, the full extended box set or whatever. That. Um, yeah, that uh, was originally an instrumental that I wrote. And Dave liked it so much that he put some lyrics to it. I took the risk, I, I got it, and I went back to my room after he, uh, in Santa Barbara, and, and I got, went back to the room and I had, suddenly was firing on these ideas and this melody and some words actually coming in my head. And then when I came back to New York, I like, put loads of vocals on it and vocal melodies, and then when we went back the next time to play each other stuff, I was like, actually, I did this to your song, you know, and. Mine didn't really say anything, but we recorded it and it might end up being one of the first collaboration between us, which was done in completely different places, in completely different parts of America at completely different times, but uh, nonetheless it is a collaboration. <laughs> it's a nice position to be in this time though, because you know we have got, I think, 23 or 24 songs of which um, three or four are Dave's and 20 are Martin's, you know. And fortunately, the quality goes, well, it's bad and good, actually, because the quality goes so, uh, I mean, there's going to be a few songs um, that are really good relegated to the subs bench. It's 
not doing the D tune, is it? Oh, yeah. But I don't think I can see. Yeah, I just wanted to get a punch on them. What is this huge black box? It's very special, actually. It's a triple R. So, uh, the Synth Nerds, it's, uh, you know, quite an incredible uh, unit. Legendary device. Legendary device, yeah. West side, November the 1st. Setting up. MIDI. Lots of MIDI. 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 Many, it it many did belong to various uh, prog bands before Martin got hold of it. But yeah, it's Martin's, yeah. Most of this stuff is Martin's. Men's got his own art there. That's just a single one. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, it does look yeah. similar. Yeah. Martin's better. Men's one's better. Well, there's only one of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one's got a spring in it. Yeah. It's very cool. Um, so that would Occasionally you have to flick them to get them to work. It's good to have a fresh team, which straight away changes the dynamic. Since the last patch record, I've got a new engineer, Ferg Peterkin, who's worked with me for a couple of years. He's a very capable engineer, very good. He can program as well, and that's a very easygoing chap, We're technically able. And then we've got Luke Smith, who I've worked with on and off for a couple of years, who is a great guitarist and is a programmer to a great depth. We also decided to change the technical way we were going to work. On the last record, we did it all sort of sound by sound, one, one thing at a time, in a fairly old-fashioned way. And on this record, we went for a more modern approach. We're basically in a big room surrounded by toys, and any one of them you can get up and get running and then plug into something else and put it round there and feed it all back around everything else. You build this big sort of impossible machine where it all kind of gets to the point where it all locks together, everything plays in time, and theoretically you just hit go and it all goes. And uh, so, from a sort of technical point of view, we changed the way we worked quite a bit. They yeah, go. they're all in there. Were you recording all that that you're doing with the art? Were you recording that live? Well, we're, well, we've set that sound up. That's going to play the bass, or a new version of the bass, and then we're going to try and get the, some of the other parts to work and leave that running live. And then we're, when we get it all tuned in to the point where it's all sounding good, we'll start recording stuff. Yeah. yeah. Try and get the whole thing running as a big machine. We have to try to... Um blend new and old technology to make them all work, which takes time. It can be fairly uh, challenging with different extremely protocols. Boring. And extremely boring, but we all kind of enjoy it. Yeah. Exciting results. Yeah. Yeah, what's boring in the pub is um, exciting on the dance floor. Why don't they produce themselves? Really? God, no. Good question. Uh, <laughs> you've got to have someone that kind of stays in charge and says, that's fine, or stop working on that now, or change what we're doing. I'll be nice to you, Martin. I'm on video. Yeah. So what yeah. you need to do, Martin, is just give it a bit of a delay. <laughs> and everything will be all right. Nothing to worry about. You need something to keep them focused, you know, something to do with experience. You know, you, you know why does you know why does Frank Lampard need a football manager? You know, and why you know why does whatever why does an experienced army need a general? I think you need somebody to, however great you are as an individual and even as a group, you still need somebody to focus the group and make sure it's going in the right direction and doesn't lose its way. We usually change every time, but uh, everyone was really happy with Ben, and we thought we, you know, that we we could um, get more out of it as well. So. Um, and he was available, so, you know, we thought, why not? 
you know, after Exciter, we really needed that input. We needed somebody that was going to be strong in the studio, that wasn't going to be afraid to, like, say, well, let's get on with it, you know. Mark, pick up the guitar, Dad, get a mic, let's start, like, doing something here. I quite like the fact that he's so dictatorial. <laughs> How does it normally work? Does he pretty much say, right, we're going to work on this track today and yeah, get in there and do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very difficult if you have a different opinion to Ben's because you don't often win. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you know, was he the referee? But it just sounds like he's just a bully. Yeah, <laughs> he is. He's, he's, a very, he's, a, he's one of those sort of like polite... Kind bullies. Passive aggressive. Yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a joke uh, amongst specifically Flood and I where you say you could just sit on the, basically to produce, you could just sit on the sofa and have two cards. One that says no and the other one says do it again. <laughs> 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 and that would do, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to be fine. Doing this one all day, I think. So, yeah, we're trying to, trying to get a different vibe on it. We've done the uh, we've done the gay disco version, so now we're trying to do the uh, I don't know something a bit more S and M. Oh yeah, sorry M and S. So oh, I keep getting getting it wrong. Has there been a lot of live performance? I mean, I saw the range of guitars yeah. in there. I mean, is that is that another collection? Yeah, that's another with another one of my addictions. Yeah. There are some old favourites here. This is one that. I use a lot live, and it's actually made from old Gretsch parts, but it was modified by someone called David Knight, and he made it feedback less by making it less hollow bodied. That always sounds good. And this is another, this is a Gretsch White Falcon. You use that one on stage as well? Yeah, I've used that one on the last tour. This one's quite interesting. I bought for this session. It's Whoa. another Gretsch, uh, Bo Diddley. That's awesome. Hence the shape, yeah. Sounds really good as well, really chunky. I mean, there are lots of Gretches. We're not quite sure what this one's called. It might be a Rambler. It's a bit smaller than the other ones. Yeah, smaller. Nice, delicate sound. I'm not sure exactly what this one's called either. Anyone watching this is probably going to be laughing at me. It could, be a, <laughs> could be a streamliner, I have no idea. But it's, it's got the cat's eye holes instead of the F holes. A Gretch Rally. This is like a 60s Fender Duo Sonic. Dan Electro, Dan Electro bass as well. This is a 60s Tysco Del Rey. That's a, a national, which is kind of like the shape of America. I think that was the idea behind it. A Gibson Firebird, which looks really cool. I've never used any of these live, so I think I will be using a lot of these on the next tour. Jesse said there was a lot more guitars here before when you were... When you were... Yeah, we, we cut down because, you know, this is the last session and we've done most of the guitars now, so... Yeah. We don't need as many. These so. are just the essentials. Yeah, I mean, we probably won't use half of these, but it was good to have them around just in case. Which is the one that you go to pick up first? It depends what we're doing, but if we're unsure, it's usually the anniversary, the Green Gretsch. The green one. And which is the one that you've used most on the record? Is Would that be the anniversary again? The anniversary and whatever that little small one that I showed you was called, yeah. the Rambler or whatever, this one. What's the next yeah. one, boss? I don't know, I mean, next on my list is the old song sorted out. Huh? Yeah, because yeah, you, you can like sort out at all. Can you sort out an old one now, maybe, yeah. guys? An old one? Let's go back to something like Some Great Reward. What was a good track on there? Yeah. I got something here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, how about Stories of Old? Yeah. <laughs> what a good idea. Brilliant. Just found it in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pick a key, any key. Let's pick A. Yeah. A minor. Yeah. All right, all right. Love A minor. <laughs> Makes them weep instantly. <laughs> Stories of old of princes bold with riches untold, the happy souls casting it all aside to take some bride to have the girl of their dreams at their side, but not me. I couldn't do that, not me. I'm not like that I couldn't sacrifice anything at all to love I really like you I'm a 
attracted to you The way you move The things you do You're probably burning hell For saying this But I'm really in heaven Wherever we kiss Oh no You won't change me You can try for an eternity I wouldn't sacrifice anything at all to love. Take a look at unselected cases. You'll find love has been wrecked. By both sides compromising Amounting to a disastrous effect Dave, you've got the New York one now. you got dual citizenship at all? No, I am what's known as an alien resident. <laughs> I have green card, but uh, that came with us from Santa Barbara, actually. The Obama campaign offices were right next to the studio so it was cool it was yeah we watched it on tv it was it was awesome watching it oh that's part of ferg's decoration yeah it helps with the sound yeah. <laughs> Do you not get through a lot of coffee during the day? Though? Yeah, we have our fair share. We drink our... I actually went for a tea this morning, just for a change. But I'm about ready for a coffee now. We used to use me uh, bottles of whiskey and vodka regularly. Now we've tamed down. It's it's tea, coffee, uh, cake. ginseng. A lot of cake. <laughs> cake, cake, lots of cake. Really? Is there a favourite coffee house? We use... Um, what's the place called around the corner? Once Upon a Tart. Yeah, Once Upon a Tart. Once Upon a Tart. Give them a little plug. Very nice. Good cake. <laughs> Good coffee. Soy milk sweetener, yeah. or is it is it creamy sugar? Uh, we just go black. Oh. <laughs> Real man. Yeah. Let's has just yeah. pure cream. Whipped cream. Okay. <laughs> I'm not lying either. <laughs> beginning of the project, I had whipped cream um, with on my coffee, and uh, I realised I'd, I realised I'd put on about. About fifty pounds, <laughs> so Dude. I had to stop having Double it. Win. Yeah, Double yeah, win. yeah. It was the uh, the end of the first session. He said, "I've really blown an opportunity. I really could have lost weight this session." <laughs> you know, he was having like double whipped cream on everything he had for that for, for a month. <laughs> He really blew it. Even it took him till the last day to yeah. realise, though. Even, on <laughs> even when we go to Mexico and have like enchiladas and stuff, he'd be like, got any whipped cream? Shove some whipped cream I on there. I enjoyed it, though. <laughs> yeah. That's what matters, really. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go and have another puff. <laughs> How was your interview with Janice Long yesterday? OK, I think. With ref Alan did most of the talking, you know, so it was pretty sweet. I mean, you know, how was it with reference to your past experiences with her, Mart? Or would you rather not talk about those on film? No, she only, she only mentioned one thing, which, which she didn't even mention it, Al said it. She, Maybe you ought to explain to our viewers exactly what it was oh, about. She, she said something like, uh, You've got... You were really impressed by Berlin or something like that, weren't you? And I said, well, I said, I, I liked it there. I said, you know, we, we had quite a good time with us over there. And uh, then Al said, oh, he was drunk. Remember, he was drunk last time he spoke to you or something like that. So, OK. That was all she said about it, though. All right, then. Sorry, one second. Yeah. I'm just gonna, one little issue with the, the flickering green light over your white shoulder on the board there. Oh, okay. I'm just going to put a piece of tape on it. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry. It's probably the least uh, favourite part of being in a band, for probably for all of us, I imagine. And you know, I, you know we, we all know that we've probably got a month of non-stop interviews <laughs> coming up in February. And if there's, if there's one thing that drives you absolutely insane, it's that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're quite lucky because you're getting us fresh. I mean, we've only done a few interviews. But... This is all right because, you know, we're just starting with that. But, um, yeah, once we sort of go out and you start actually kind of going from country to country and talking about the record, I find that the most painful part of the process, to be quite honest, because, I don't know. Oh, this is...
Fifty-eight X. He might have to do this interview. He's got another one. He's got another interview. Another one. Because uh, this, you know, there's a separate crew. I'm oh, seeing a makeup person and everything. Oh really? Plus these guys. I did yeah. tell him about twenty minutes. Though. Yeah. Well, why don't you go and do it, Mike? I'm going to come back and figure out sound. Okay. It's only about twenty minutes. And at least you've got dinner coming up as well. Okay. This way, sir. The other crew. I wasn't sure whether because they had to take my light and we're going to do it on the set, so would you mind if I put some powder on you on the set directly? No, it's or okay. You know what, take a seat. Let me just see if I can see in it. And then I'm going to put some in the chat. I think we're good. I can do it. Yeah. And then, then we'll all go in there for a set. Oh, you've got a light too. You could use our light. Oh, great. Thanks. They can come in handy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Candlelight is actually the case. Cameras aren't a complete mess. <laughs> Got another day in the studio. We come in usually around this time, get made up before we start working. Makes us feel better when we're performing. No one can tell you're tired at the end of the day. <laughs> exactly. Get a touch up about four o'clock before cake. <laughs> Just a girl who's doing the interview is attractive. <laughs> yeah, it's much more fun, I have to say. You should put a wig on, Rona. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, um, let's start with the title of the album. Um, sounds of Universe. What's what's the story behind that? Uh, do, sorry, uh, before I start, do I have to ask answer with a question? Yeah, that'd be helpful. Oh, sorry. Usual thing. Try and get the question in the answer if possible. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, sounds of the Universe. Yeah, title of the album. Um, I think everybody gets a bit burnt out by that. But I think the last three weeks that we've got here now are going to be the worst because we've got so much to do. We've got to make a video, uh, we're going to do some live tracks in the studio, we've got to do a photo session, you know, at the same time as finishing off recording and uh, mixing as well. So it's a bit of a, uh, a head fuck, to be honest. And we've got to do all our Christmas shopping. <laughs> What's on the uh, agenda for today? Have you got anything particularly you've got to get done? Uh, We're just going to sit a, on our arse is there and a back do page? fucking nothing. <laughs> Another page, yeah. Yeah, we've got the mix. The mix is um, another mix coming up. As you know, that's when we get excited. So we're just starting to mix that's the album now, aren't we? Title track. And you're going to mix the album in order. Going straight through now for the next 19 days.
helping them get the songs into a final sort of realized state that um, all the things that they've done, that they've been through with those songs, um, the weeks, months, whatever, you know, um, and you know, and even whoever wrote the song, the, you know, from the inception of the song, the demos, all the things that, that were going through everyone's minds somehow come to fruition at now, like this is it, basically. Well, I put Tony forward because I think he'd done a fantastic job on Hourglass and it was great to work with. If you're not happy with something, he, he really, he listens to what you're saying very carefully and he makes it right. Uh, he makes it how you want it to be and it's hard to do that when you're working with a band because, you know, there's a lot of different um, cooks in there wanting to hear it how they want to hear it. It often happens where you give him the song he has a few hours on it to get it to the point where it sounds good and he's happy sonically. And then um, we go in and go, yep, yeah, that all sounds good, but the chorus isn't going, and the verses aren't enough, and we can't get enough in the, in the middle eight or something like that. The voice sounds really thin and, you know, it sounds like it needs more effect on it, I think. It just sounds, you know, I, I usually go the other way, I know. Virtually yeah. every other mix, I've gone the exactly the opposite, but yeah. it just sounds really you know, on its own. And too dry. Yeah, too dry and too thin. Just it's, really quite a, it's quite a lot of distortion on it. You've got some sort of effect on it, haven't you? Sort of distortion thing. Yeah, we put an effect on it in Santa Barbara, which, right. Using, which is right. Right. I, I, I think if you're going to go like that way with it, I'm yeah. not sure I like it at all, that, that, that effect. But um, I think it could work if, if, when it goes to the choruses, that it feels warm and inviting. Yeah. Like if you're going, if you're going to contrast it that much, the, the contrast yeah. isn't enough. Yeah. No, I, I thought like, the lead was actually a bit quiet in the chorus. Yeah. The the vocal, vocal yeah. vocals just take <laughs> over there. Yeah, very but swimming, it's not yeah. that It's not even. Yeah. There's that, but it, you're the the harshness. I thought yeah. the beat backing up level was good. I thought Dave could be richer and oh, more, yeah. more present. I was pushing more, more. Martin because I thought that. Yeah. You were no, that's fair enough. We've said that on every other mix, so it's the, you know, fair enough. Oh, do you think that the, you know, the pulse thing is working? You know? Right, no. It's always seen much yeah. really groove, yeah. even the, what I've listened to in there today. Yeah, you can't really hear that now, can you? Is that, is that switching like you had like you had it? That's right. That's right. Do, do, is that do, do, happening do, do, here now? Do, do. It's a, um, yes, yeah. 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 Maybe it needs a bit more of the, of the sort of the pitch in the Steiner. Do you want to give me 10, yeah. 15 minutes? Yeah. 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 And I'll tweak a couple of things. All right, well done, Tony. Cool. Getting there. Yeah. Well, it sounds like a lot, but spongy. Sorry. Yeah. And I think we just got slightly the wrong focus on. Is that a typical feedback response? Or yeah. No? It's about, uh, well, what well, actually was the reverse of what we normally do. Yeah. Yeah. Normally, it's it's uh, turn the backing vocals up and the lead vocal down a little bit, and. Uh, and that one's the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, you, you always get to that point. You think they're just trying to keep you on your toes? Probably. <laughs> Because you showed off in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> one of the vocals was not the right one that was in here, mm -hmm. so that that'll probably be. That'll make a big difference. Yeah. You hear it once, and you are, and all the things that stick out. If they're not what you want to be, the things that stick out, then you get that sort of response. But the difference is in it being right and it being as it was, are usually fairly minimal. We've been working on this for months and months and months, so. Uh, things become your like your precious thing, mm -hmm. and I like that about it. And I, and you got to kind of allow someone else's perspective. Yeah, and we're you know quite often we're not on the same page anyway about it. But you hope that when somebody puts it up, who's coming with fresh ears and just hears this song, what they're trying to get out of it is what they feel. And you know, nine times out of ten, Tony's really great. Nice. The chorus is still a little more, but the, the feeling, the change, and stuff like that, and, the, and now I can hear the verse like that better. Because yeah, it was just 
slightly too much of one thing and not enough of the other. Isn't it? it kind of actually, when you come out of that, the, that chorus punches more. Yeah. yeah. That's cool, like having something pop out there. I like, just like the popping out stuff. Yeah. You like it to pop out, but pop out less. Not just pop all the way. Less. Not pop all the way. Just give you a little glimpse. Pop right. out in a way that our mums would like. <laughs> That'd be very deep. <laughs> My mum would probably like it louder. <laughs> <laughs> Say about that? Yeah, she'd probably think it was a little loud, but she'd grow to love it, wouldn't she? Yeah. 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 That's the sound of the universe. That's the sound of the universe. Sound of exactly. So that's good. That's that is we are the sound of the universe. <laughs> nice one, Tony. Cool. Okay, Sid. <laughs> Sid. <laughs> Sid. Sid. Thank you, Tony. Nice one, Tony. Nice one, son. Nice one, Tony. Let's have another one. This is what we do at this stage. After we we say Sid, we mean shove it down. Anyway, shove it down. Shall we do it? And then we do a customary play on the biggies. We say we. Everyone leaves the room. Everyone leaves the room. Everyone else leaves the room. Cheers, Tone. Well done. Yeah, Give us a hug. Actually, sounds yeah. awesome. I think that track. Cool. when the season's over anyway. Is that uh, usually like when the recording sessions finish? End of, the, end of one of the sessions, yeah. Four week sessions, so it's got four week seasons, in fact. Four week seasons with some sessions going on. The rules have been getting more and more advanced, haven't they? Yeah. To, uh, to make it fairer. We used to play to 10 every day, and, um, and that was getting, it was taking too long. So, it was like, so we had to cut it down to three minutes aside, so that you could actually, so we didn't actually spend all the afternoon playing. And one of the first rules they changed was you had to swap at half time, because yeah, otherwise, not, Mine's I won every time. Yeah, Mine's basically a, an outrageous striker. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's in the Matrix or something. He's able to see things that we can't see. He's able to slow the yes. whole game down somehow and okay. see that shot. Whereas we just generally, Birds of Paradise just generally use brute force. Yeah. And brute you know, force yeah, it yeah. works quite well yeah. actually. And cheating. Cheating, cheating is good. good. Yeah, cheating is good. Yeah. Squawking. Mm, yeah, there is a lot of bird like squawking yeah. actually, especially hence, out here. Hence the name. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, oh. That lady's grunting at tennis. 
Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's something really great about that. Oh, um, what's her name? Uh, Sharon Pover. Oh, Sharon Pover, as we call her. <laughs> Sharon Pover, yeah, she's all right. She does a lot of grunting, doesn't she? From Basildon. From Basildon, yeah, Sharon Pover. Oh, yes, and that's all right. Come on, Mark. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, she's all right. Yeah, she's all right. Oh, good goal. Thanks, man. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We've won the last three seasons. Oh, come on, Mark! <laughs> <laughs> when does this session finish? We've still got, what, two and a half weeks to go? Yeah. Okay, so you could pull it back quite easily. Yeah. We will yeah, pull it back. Still, we always win, so it's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> What's on for this afternoon, then? It's all over now, isn't it? Yeah, it takes about half an hour to yeah. wind down. You're a bit deflated, after yeah. Yeah. We've got some. Uh, we've got some guitar noises to make, haven't we? Should we do that? Yeah. Yeah. You already <laughs> and we're waiting to for Tony to finish, to yeah. finish a mix. Another half hour and Tony will be ready to play the mix, but we've got some uh, some treatments to do in here, and then uh, yeah, Bob's your mother's brother. Last day of so-called recording. Dave's already departed. We'll be on our way soon. It's been very enjoyable though, hasn't it? God knows when we'll be back. Yeah, it's been enjoyable, hasn't it? You can say that again. We really have enjoyed the last three months, actually. We had generally quite a good time. Exciting. It was a new thing for me to but work with a band as established as them. And I think with this one, because we all know each other, you know, better and from the very beginning, and there's a lot of things that we haven't had to find out. Which again, you know, in some ways means it's not quite as exciting. So, but it means musically we've been able to put everything into that. So musically it's been far more, it's been more thrilling. Yeah. But if you'd asked me that 10 or 20 years ago, you know, I don't know what my answer would have been. There's more chance of it now than there was 10 or 20 years ago. You know, they may not do it as often, they may do it differently, but they've finished this record in a very good personal kind of band space, you know. They're getting on really well. I think it's the best it's been for a long time, a very long time, if not even ever. I could corrupt you.
It feels like a, you know, like a family when I'm together with the band. It's been going on for so long. It's, you know, it's almost like a, a shield and protection. And, you know, obviously I'm at home, I'm just a totally different normal person. Insecure. <laughs> <laughs> If Jen says to me something like, well, you know, you have to do it, it's something that you have to do, I'll, I'll sort of, no, I don't, you know. Could, but when I'm performing, it does feel like something that's really natural. When it's all working, it feels like there's a real purpose to what I'm part of with the band. And uh, it's, I can't really explain it any better than that. And, you know, the audience, the fans, you know, are part of that too. The Stones now, they're, they're doing tours and they're like in their 60s, you know. And I would like to say now that when I'm 60, you know, 61, that I wouldn't want to be touring around the world, you know. But I don't know, it just seems like you start to think more and more, you can see it happen maybe. <laughs> I don't like to think about it, but, you know, somewhere like lurking in the back of my brain, I've got this like really bad image of me still doing it, yeah. <laughs> I could corrupt you It would be ugly They could sedate you But what could put drugs me? But I wouldn't touch you Put my hands on your hips It would be too much to Terrific fucking job. Nice one. Thanks. Nice thank, thank you, guys. Thank what you. an MD. You just have it for the MD. Oh. Luke Smith. Thank oh, you. no, no. Please, please. Yeah. Rage the talent. The talent. The talent. The talent. The talent. This is and the real talent. Yeah. The man that's going to fix it. <laughs> the Ferg stuff. There he is well, over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the geese are going to make it sound all right. Yeah. No, good work, gents. Yeah, well very done. Very good, very good. Well done.